Hello and welcome to FPL Mates, your best mate for fantasy Premier League content for the 2023-24 season. And my name is Dan and Harry Kane was the second highest scoring player in FPL last season. And yet not many people are going for him in their FPL teams. Maybe it's too difficult to fit him in. Well, I took that as an absolute challenge. And today we're going to show you what I believe is a fantastic FPL team that manages to fit both Erling Haaland and Harry Kane into the same team. Believe me, guys, this looks good. Thank you guys for suggesting making this video on my uh, Salah draft. Uh, a lot of you guys commented saying you would like to see a Kane draft. So that's exactly what we're doing today. If you do enjoy this one, please do drop a like. Do subscribe if you are new around here and let me know if there's any other videos you would like to see in the coming weeks. So once again, guys, we have spent all at 100 million of our budget. Believe me, with two premiums, you have to spend all of the cash. So let's go through this team, starting off in goal with Flecken. So Flecken is the new Brentford goalkeeper. It looks like he is going to be the guy to replace Rea when Rea leaves the club. He uh, is just 4.5 million. So if Rea leaves, or should I say when Rea leaves, because it looks like he is going to be leaving in this summer, uh, Brentford going to try and get a, a price for him before he leaves on a free next season. Season, this guy is going to be the best 4.5 million goalkeeper without a doubt and I feel like we do need to try and find a 4.5 million goalkeeper to emerge for this season. Flecken is that guy. Had a really successful season last year at Freiburg uh, keeping a lot of clean sheets and to be fair Brentford are a pretty decent defence anyway and they've got some insane fixtures at the start of the season where you really do expect some clean sheets here. Like look at some of these guys. Like there's going to be clean sheets in, in some of these games. There is no doubt about that. Right. Anyway, uh, let's uh, move on to defenders. I'm going to go for Luke Shaw in this team. So this is the first time I've actually included Luke Shaw in any drafts. But you'll see shortly there's no other Manchester United players in this team. It's just too difficult to fit in uh, some of the more expensive ones. So for now, we have actually got Luke Shaw in the team. Team. Fantastic fixtures, particularly from a defensive point of view. You can imagine that Wolves, Nottingham Forest, these two kind of uh, these two kind of fixtures should be uh, yielding clean sheets, and maybe Luke Shaw can get some attacking returns as well. Take some corners, can be very very advanced at times. He is a little bit expensive at 5.5 million, but you do get a decent amount from him, particularly with the fixtures and the potential attacking returns. And United actually a really solid defence last year, looking to add a new goalkeeper to their ranks as well. As things uh, as I talk, there will be a, certainly a new United keeper within the coming days. So Luke Shaw could be a real guy to go for. Really popular this season and for good reason. Next up, Purvis Estupinian. He's been in every single one of the drafts I've made. He is, to me, pretty much essential. So super attacking left back. Um, amazing fixtures. Plays in a reasonably good defense in a very good Brighton team as well. You're going to get goals from him. You're going to get assists from him. But you're also going to get clean sheets when you look at the likes of Luton, Wolves, West Ham. There's going to be clean sheets in this run. So, Estupinian going to have a phenomenal season. Definitely a player to be picking. And we have got Gabriel in this defense as well. So, I feel like we have to go in on the Arsenal defense somehow, whether that's via Ramsdale or via a defender. In terms of defenders, Gabriel is my favorite. He's got insane uh, goal-scoring threat, actually, for a defender. There are very, very few defenders that have a, uh, have a better goal-scoring threat. I think it's just Fabian Scher is the only player in the Premier League that registered more XG last season. So, when Arsenal are... Kind of taking those corners, it is going to be Gabriel at the end of those taking headers, trying to score those goals. So against the likes of Forest, Crystal Palace, Fulham, there's going to be a few goals for Arsenal. Some of those goals are going to come from set pieces. You never know. You could get a cheeky little lucky Gabriel goal in there. And clean sheets definitely on the cards with Arsenal reinforcing their defensive line with Declan Rice and with Saliba back in the squad as well. It's going to be very good for Arsenal moving forward with their kind of defensive abilities, with their abilities to get clean sheets and obviously the xg that gabriel provides can translate into goals into midfield we're going to keep the theme to arsenal with saka so again another player who's been in pretty much every single one of my drafts i feel like he is an essential player and uh, you guys who watched my tier list video for the midfielders that i uploaded yesterday will kind of have seen already that i rate saka very highly he's definitely a player that i would have in every single one of your drafts if possible uh, on those uh those penalties as well as having the best Kind of uh, kind of underlying numbers of any Arsenal players. One of the top scoring players in FPL last season, and a player who is constantly getting better and improving. Nailed on as well. Going to play every single game. Going to be nailed on for every single game. There is nothing to dislike about Saka at 8.5 million. I think that is an absolute snip 
for this guy. And next up, Martinelli. So Martinelli, again, a debut for Martinelli in my drafts. I've not made a Martinelli draft yet, but I feel like if we're not going for Gabriel Jesus in the forward position, uh, because obviously we've got Harry Kane there, which you guys know, because that's the whole point of this video. Um, maybe there is an opportunity to go for another Arsenal attacker. Could go the Erdegaard direction, but Martinelli, I feel like, has the best goal scoring threat um, of the uh, of the two players and comes in at 8 million, which is just slightly cheaper as well. I feel like if I was to stretch to 8.5 million, I'd probably move to Fernandez, to be honest, to Bruno Fernandez, but budget is restrictive. We can only go so far with it, uh, but you can maybe make some kind of minor changes to this team, I guess. Uh, but yeah, Martinelli, I still feel like is maybe an underrated player, a player who's not been spoken about too much. Again, was in the top five scoring midfielders last season. So we're expecting uh, a young player in an improving team to continue that upward trajectory of great FPL point scoring. Next up, Phil Foden, and I'm really struggling to make FPL teams without including one other Man City player. I feel like we just look at these run of fixtures. We've got Burnley, Sheffield United and Fulham in the opening four and we're talking about a Man City team who score an insane amount of goals every single season. There is going to be opportunity here to get some serious differential FPL points and I feel like Aside from Erling Haaland, it's difficult to pick the, the right midfielder to go for, the right other Man City attacker to go for. But Phil Foden, with his goal-scoring ability, with the fact that a lot of uh, midfielders have kind of uh, left or are leaving Man City at the moment, may give Foden a better opportunity to get more game time. Always starts the season very well, does Phil Foden as well. So really, really liking the look of this differential player at 11% ownership at time of recording. That could even drop down as we approach uh, game week one and people... Uh, less prepared to take a risk on another Man City midfielder. Kaoru Mitoma is another player who is definitely on the cards for a lot of people. A 6.5 million midfielder with some phenomenal fixtures at the start of the season. If you're backing anyone to do something against Luton Town, you can imagine Kaoru Mitoma, the Japanese man, to twist this team into absolute knots. Let's see what happens there. I'm definitely excited to watch that opening game in the Premier League season. I think that could be a really interesting one for Brighton, I'm sure. Mitoma is going to absolutely star in that game. Not 100% convinced by his output. Definitely an area of his game that can improve, but he gets himself in the right positions, which is uh, half the battle, really, isn't it? Uh, Brian Mbumo on penalties for Brentford. Going to be playing further up the pitch, either as a striker or a winger for Brentford uh, in the new season. Has some uh, decent opening fixtures as well. Spurs, that opening fixture there, which is going to be, uh, uh, I think, easier than a lot of people think it's going to be, to be fair, uh, for Brentford to get something out of that game. And Mbumo ended last season so well. When Tony is not in the team, Mbumo just turns into, like, Tony number two. He's like, he's like a baby Tony. If you're looking for a baby Tony for your FBL team, well, you have one, and he's listed as a midfielder, so he gets an extra point for a goal and clean sheet points as well. Not too bad, really, guys, is it? Uh, up front, we have got Erling Haaland, of course. Uh, he's in every draft who I, that I've ever seen. His ownership is just increasing and increasing. He's up to 85.4% owned now. Can we see Erling Haaland become the first 90% owned player in FPL? It's definitely possible, despite the fact he is eating 14 million of our budget. It could still probably happen. Uh, and finally, let's finish off the attack with the guy, the man who we are kind of building this team around, really. It's Harry Kane, 12.5 million, pretty expensive and not the best two opening fixtures, but he is Mr. Reliable. Scored so well last season, went under the radar for a lot of people and ended up being the second highest scoring player in FPL. Actually really close to Erling Haaland. Broke his uh, kind of goal scoring record there as well in the Premier League, uh, near enough. So that was really insane from him. Can he have another fantastic season in the Premier League? for Tottenham Hotspur before leaving on a free next summer. I don't know. Let's see. He might not even be in the Premier League in a few weeks, to be fair. But certainly right now, if Harry Kane is in the Premier League, he should not be ignored. We really need to be careful about ignoring him. And if we can build a good team around him, and I believe this is then he could be an insane pick, a super differential and real player to kind of get ahead, get an advantage over a lot of people who are too hesitant to pick him because of that price tag, because of trying to spread the budget a little bit. Let's go into the bench, guys. I have cut some corners here. So we've got Ariola, 4 million goalkeeper, but I have actually gone for two 4 million defenders, which I know is not going to sit well with a lot of people. Bulldog and Bayer. Bulldog of Sheffield United, Bayer of Burnley, two I don't want to say nailed on, but like 
like 99% nailed on players for their respective teams. These players are going to be playing regularly for their teams. If you have any faith in them, uh, those promoted teams to get a couple of clean sheets and both players have a couple of decent fixtures, then that could be absolutely uh, phenomenal. It really, really could. So these are your guys covering your starting 11. But really, when we talk about defenders and potentially rotating defenders, I look at Luke Shaw, Estupinian and Cab Gabriel. I would not personally want to bench them ever. Like, I would want to play these two players every single game. So we don't really need defenders to rotate with them, if that makes any sense. And also, at the same time, it also, like, yes, you could get an occasional Phil Foden kind of getting benched. And then if Foden is benched and plays zero minutes, then at that point, you are going to be relying on your bench a little bit and those bench players. But what we've seen over the last year or so is that with the amount of substitutes substitutions allowed in a Premier League game, even when a player is benched, they more often than not will come on for a one minute cameo or a 10 minute cameo or, you know, they play for a few minutes. So it's actually very rare that we are depending on our bench to cover our starting 11 and, and, and going for a super cheap bench like we have. We've got Cameron Archer there as well. Really, really good player uh, who did super well in the championship last year is now going to be the backup striker for Ollie Watkins at Villa, who may rotate given the European competition. There's a little tangent for you. Um, we spoke about him in a in a video a couple of days ago so do go check that out but um yeah so I don't think we actually need to focus too much on the bench and I feel like by going you know just dropping a 4.5 million defender on the bench down to a 4 million defender these still are players who will play regularly and will get you FPL points just that now we are able to spend all of our money in the starting 11 and actually create what is on screen, guys, a really good team. Like, this is a really good team. And people are kind of struggling to make good teams with two premiums in, in there. This is it. And you, you'll also get to keep a 3-5-2 formation, which I think is a corner that a lot of people have cut. A lot of people have tried to make a team with Kane or a team with Salah, but are unable to do that without switching to a four at the back formation. We already know there's so much value in midfield that we want to have a five midfield formation. You know, bringing in that second premium to me is not worth changing formation. So I feel like if you're going to bring in that second pr premium, then you do also need to try and maintain that 3-5-2 structure, if at all possible. And that's exactly what we've done here. Now, the one kind of problem with this team, for me personally, is the lack of Liverpool. So there's no Trent Alexander-Arnold in this team. He offsets the balance too much, and he makes this basically become a team that is not flexible enough. If you bring in Trent, it makes the team very difficult to switch between midfielders. We've got to think about future transfers we're going to be making as well, and having that flexibility and have that ability to make transfers and switch between various players. Trent is the only player at his price point. So in that sense, maybe you could switch Shaw and Martinelli to a Trent and Inciso. Two players, same price, but, you know, in the different positions instead. But you're not going to have the same amount of flexibility. And also that means you've got no Manchester United players in your team. So I feel like there's a choice to be made there. You could potentially go for Luis Diaz instead of Martinelli or instead of Foden if you do want to go in on a Liverpool player. But outside of Salah and Trent... I'm not, I'm not actually loving the Liverpool FPL picks this year. Like, they're okay. There's some decent risks to be taken. But there's no one there who, like, really stands out to me a lot. So, there we go, guys. Um, let's put the captain's armband on. Uh, let's put it on Holland, of course. We, we put it on him every single video. So, we may as well continue that trend. I'm going to keep the vice captain on Saka, though, for that game against Nottingham Forest. Not really quite sure I am ready to put a captain's armband on Kane against Brentford. Not sure it's the right fixture for him. But uh, it still could be really good with all that Harry Kane offers. Uh, and there you go, guys. That is the team. Let me know what you think about this one. I think, I honestly, I genuinely think this is a really, really strong team. I think you'll struggle to make a better 3-5-2 Harry Kane draft. I think you'll struggle. But maybe you guys can uh, do something. So let me know what you think. Uh, that is the team. Right, there we have it, guys. If you did enjoy this one, please do drop a like. Really does help out the channel. And make sure you subscribe if you want to see more FPL drafts, you want more FPL tips, and want to have a, a more of a kind of an in-depth FPL in experience where, we, where we, we geek out a little bit over here. But I think that's all good fun. Uh, make sure you go check out Fantasy Football Hub. Their new My Team tool is dropping. Honestly, it's incredible. You can get your team rated there and see actually how good it is. Uh, I want to start rating some of my teams actually on that tool in the near future. Plus, they've got 50% off right now. So, link in the description. Definitely worth checking out. Plenty of other videos on the channel as well. But aside from that, guys, thank you so much for watching once again. And I will see you later. Thanks. Bye-bye.